A Legacy of Courage, Dr. Franklin E. McCain, Sr. On February 1, 1960, Franklin E. McCain, Ezell Blair, Jr., now Jabril Kazan, Joseph McNeil, and David Richmond, four freshmen from North Carolina A&T State University, started the sit-in movement at the segregated lunch counter of the F.W. Woolworth store in downtown Greensboro. There were some things that bothered me as a young boy about this democracy of ours that was not real to a lot of people. My colleagues felt the same way about the situation in this country and about our democracy. And we determined to do something about it. And through a lot of hard work, a lot of danger, and at a human price and sacrifice, and I seek no sympathy for it, we changed the course of not only what we do in Greensboro, but the course of history relative to civil rights in this country. This single act of courage ignited a spark that spread to cities throughout the nation. In the days that followed, the A&T Four gained support of other students from A&T, Bennett College, Women's College, now the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, and Dudley High School. You know, I would say that I was proud to, very proud in fact, when the 1965 Civil Rights Bill was enacted or signed. Uh, because in my heart, and as said by Martin Luther King, it was in great measure because of the renewal of the civil rights movement that started in Greensboro, North Carolina. Dr. McCain demonstrated his commitment to social justice and equality through a lifetime of service to his alma mater, his community, the state, and the nation. I grew up as a uh, person who was taught to always think about others in terms of what you do not always how it's going to influence and impact you, but what is it going to do to other people? And never assume that you were the center of anything. He was instrumental in organizing and leading several community and civic organizations and served on various boards throughout the state, including the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Bennett College, North Carolina Central University, and his beloved North Carolina A&T, where he once served as the chairman of the Board of Trustees. Dr. McCain was also a member of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors. Known as a man for the people, Dr. McCain was also a man who lived for his family. There are things in this life that I am compelled to pass on to my grandchildren for their betterment because I got a lot of stuff to hand off to you as my grandparents and my parents handed off to me. He married Betty Davis, a Bennett College alumna who also had participated in the sit-in demonstrations. Together they had three sons, Franklin Jr., Wendell, and Bertrand, and a host of grandchildren. When in the presence of Dr. McCain, you felt his conviction and experienced his passion. He was exact in speech and sure-footed about his beliefs. He believed in education. He believed in uprooting inequality wherever it grew and he believed, most of all, that we all had a responsibility in making this nation, this world, a better place. If there is something that you want to do and in your heart, you know that it needs to be changed, modified, or turned upside down, go ahead and do it. Don't follow your head. Don't follow your heart. Follow your gut. But don't wait for anybody because it is you who, you've got the vision and you've got the faith and the confidence in yourself that you know that you can make it happen. But if you continue to wait, all the masses will do is pull you down and discourage you and give you all the reasons that it won't work. Dr. Franklin E. McCain Sr. is more than just a notable figure. He rewrote the course of American history. He was a man of great purpose, great principle, and most of all, he was a man of great courage. Lord, one day.